Hello, welcome to the Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster from Contact Renovations and Custom Homes. This week makes uh, for episode number 20. So we've got 20 in the bag and uh, this week's show um, is a great one. We're talking about custom glass and mirrors. So this is shower doors, this is glass railings, this is mirrored products. Um, our guest today is Andrew Davidson. He's the president of Simple Spaces. And uh, they're a, a local company, and uh, they do really great work for us. So, um, custom glass, boy, that's a way to make or break your bathroom renovation, or maybe you're doing a gym and you have some mirrored or you know, office with a glass wall system. These are all um, really important things. Like the glass component takes good planning, needs a certain level of accuracy, um, and if you uh, you don't plan and execute it well, it can really have a negative impact on your space. So we'll show lots of images today that kind of reinforce that and we can talk a bit about your options and uh, things that you might want to consider when um, when planning the glass component of your project. Just so waiting to see if uh, Simple Spaces shows up here. Don't see them yet. Um, yeah, so here, let's put up the cover of the show here. Bear with me for a sec. If you've ever seen um, a framed shower door versus frameless, or you've ever handled a very thin um, glass panel on a shower door before that vibrates and all that stuff, you know the difference in quality, both in how it looks and feels in, in function. So um, that's something certainly uh, that you'll see at the end of the show today, why it's so important that you weigh in your, you know, the different factors, whether it be the quality of the material, which have a direct impact on price. Um, you know, certainly you cannot compare a five mil glass panel with a 12 mil glass panel. The pricing is very different, but so is um, the way it will perform and ultimately how it will hold up in the long run. So there's Simple Spaces just joined up here now. So, um, so I'll give uh, Andrew an intro here, then I'll pull him into the show. So Andrew Davidson, he's the president of Simple Spaces. He started in the home building industry when he was 17 years old. Uh, he worked with one of Alberta's largest volume builders for 22 years in a wide variety of roles and responsibilities. A couple of years ago, he took over Simple Spaces and has been working on growth and expansion in Alberta and into the U.S. He's got an amazing family, he's got a wife and four kids. They spend a lot of time outside playing basketball and enjoying the outdoors in general. Uh, he loves being in the industry. Each day they get to create and make something new. Being part of these beautiful homes and projects he's a part of gets his creative, creative juices flowing and he really enjoys that they make their products right here in Alberta. Um, I love that too. I'm a huge fan of supporting our local vendors, entrepreneurs, artisans, everything. So um, big shout out to those guys. I'll send um, Andrew the invite here. Do, do, do. Bear with me one sec. Mm -hmm. I send the invite off and then we'll talk a bit about the giveaway item in a second here. Um, they have offered up, um, oh, here he is, man of the hour. Hey, Paul, how are you? Good. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. All right. Oh, this should be fun. I'm uh, looking through all the photos and stuff and, you know, it's something I mentioned earlier here when we just started off the show that the glass can have such a huge impact upon the finish of a pro of a project, whether it's a bathroom or a railing or a mirrored system. And I think it's really important that uh, people recognize the value of having that done right. Um, so there you go. Yeah, it's 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 really critical. It's something that seems as simple as just a clear pane of glass, almost like a force field, but. Um, if not done right or not done in the, the proper steps and processes, it really stands out as, uh, as, as the wrong thing. So it, it takes a lot of effort and we're, we're excited to be a part of that process. Awesome. So the giveaway item today, um, Simple Spaces offered up a mirror, a custom beveled mirror and installation up to a 30 square foot mirror. So yeah. um, now the skill testing question to be qualified for the draw, which is a random draw at the end of the show, we do it uh, about five minutes before we wrap up, is, pardon me, what temperature does glass need to reach to become tempered? So this is a technical question. Now would be a great time to Google it. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, it's super hot. So I, I never would have guessed it. 
I'll answer it once now, then the rest of the show, everyone can kind of look back at the other answers or Google it, but 700 degrees Celsius. So let's talk about it for one sec here. Why does it need to get so hot? What's the process? What happens when it hits that, that critical point of temperature? Yeah, great question. You know, it's, um, like I said, it, it requires a lot of large, heavy industrial equipment to turn glass into something that's, you know, big and dangerous and, and you know, big, deadly shards if it breaks into something that's just those small safety cubes. So you'll see that glass will break down to those tiny little pieces when it's properly tempered. And so the glass is just like a, a big chunk of steel. You heat it up to get it really, really hot. And then you throw it into what we call the quench cycle. And that quench cools it down at a rapid pace. And that quenching sort of creates tension on the two outside layers and it makes it really, really tight. And that's what happens when it, uh, or that's what makes it actually shatter and break um, at, that, at that height and that temperature. So it cools it, it gets it really, really hot and then it cools it down really quick. Um, depending on the glass thickness, it takes anywhere from, you know, about 230 seconds to about 780 seconds in the oven and the quench cycle to get that properly tempered glass. Right. So, I mean, for those of you who don't know and understand what the point of the tempered glass is, so if it breaks, it basically shatters into a million pieces, none of which are very sharp and you won't get cut. Right. Is that right? That's the yeah, thing. you know, it, it, it is glass, so you can maybe get some scratches, but it, it's not dangerous. It's not deadly like it would be if it was just a big pane of um, untempered glass. So, yeah, it keeps it very safe. Hockey games, hockey arenas, you know, when you see the guys body checking into that glass or firing a puck at it, that's tempered glass. And the odd time it breaks, and it's always exciting when it does, uh, but when it does, it's just those small little pieces, and it just sort of almost explodes. It just goes pop, and then it, it breaks into those tiny little little cubes. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's tempered glass. So there you go. Still testing questions been answered. Um, to enter, enter the answer in the comments. At the end of the show, we'll do a, a random draw and you can win a 30 square foot or less, I guess, custom beveled. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Um, and I guess I'm not sure what beveled means. There's, of course, my head's in the way, but a beveled edge is kind of a tapered edge on the edge of the glass. Um, right. I guess so we'll, when, we, when, when the customer, the, the, the winner comes forward, we, we can do that mirror in a quarter inch bevel up to an inch and a quarter bevel. And, and again, it's custom sizes. We, we make our own mirrors and bevel our own mirrors here. So whatever you need for, for your setup in your house, we'll, we'll find a way to make it uh, look beautiful and we'll get it installed for you. There's a great There's a couple, there. Some options there on the size of the bevel um, and you can see how it impacts the look and whatnot. So. Again, I suppose like this is a great example of options, right? You hear about a beveled mirror or beveled glass. Well, there's options within that option itself. What size do you want, right? As you get into other mirrors, you'll have different types of edges. So if you have an, a non-beveled edge mirror, when you order one, and we see this all the time when we're getting like a construction grade mirror, for example, if you don't specify a polished edge or um, I guess you, you can maybe talk about the edge options, but sometimes sure. you can get a very ugly edge comes with your mirror and you go, well, what's with that? Well, that's, that's kind of what a builder grade mirror would be considered, right? So, mm -hmm. so with, with mirror and, and actually all glass products, it's not cut, it's, it's scored. They, they, we take a, a diamond edge uh, tool and in our case, in our factory, we've got uh, two large CNC machines that you know, zigzag all across the, the table and make the cuts that we need or the, the scoring that we need. And then it gets broken. So a, a piece of the table will pop up in a certain section, just as you can see with my hand there, and that will actually have the table or the, the mirror break. Um, a lot of companies will just leave that as that raw, like you said, construction grade edge. Some companies will do what we call in, in the industry an aorist edge, where they'll take a hand sander or a belt sander, and they'll sand it down. Or you'll do what we do, which is a machined edge, um, which it goes through, again, a large piece of equipment. It grinds that edge down to a nice uniform sort of chamfer detail. And then the other option, if a client's interested, we can do a high, high polish on that edge. Um, our standard finish is that machined edge, not, not the rough uh, Aris edge, but mm -hmm. you, you do require um, large pieces of equipment to make that happen in a, in a timely manner. Absolutely. I guess like anything, if you're considering getting some custom mirrors done or custom glass work, you want to ask those questions. What's, mm -hmm. What are my edge finish options? 
in addition to what is the thickness of the glass that's coming, right? Again, that's really, really important. Back. Yeah, yeah that, that thickness of the mirror, when we focus on the mirror in, in this part of the conversation, um, you know, mirror can be anywhere from three millimeters thick up to six millimeters thick. And anything really under five millimeters starts to give you that um, uh, fun house, you know, uh, county fair sort of fun house mirror look where, <laughs> you know, maybe in some cases it's good. I, I just turned 41 a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, I, I could use something that slims me down a little bit in the middle. But uh, <laughs> what you want to find is, is really that five mil thick mirror and up. And that's going to give you a, a more solid, stable uh, base for your mirror. And, and it's, again, it's just a higher quality and it's, it's going to give you the look you want so that you're not, like you said, looking in a funhouse mirror. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess like, like any product, you need to know what your options are. So, um, you know, talk to somebody, a professional, so in your, in, you know, or somewhere like Simple Spaces, they'll explain to you in the showroom exactly what the options are, you know, why product A versus B costs more money. Um, and then you, you can make an, an informed decision at that point, right? So. Absolutely. You know, let's talk more about mirrors here for a little bit. So, so mirrors, so different ways that they can be um, installed, right? Of different edge finishes, different thicknesses. But here is an example of kind of a more traditional install of a, of a mirror where it stops below your, your lighting fixture, right? Which mm -hmm. is kind of a classic, classic way to install them. Yeah. Um, then you also have another way here, for example, where you can actually have uh, an opening cut in the mirror so you can fit the electrical box through the glass and you can have then a surface mounted vanity light. So these are really important things to know about in advance. Um, you know, I guess, can you comment, talk about this a little bit and do you see any common issues that come up on your end when you do these kind of things or? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the picture you've got up is a, is a good example. Um, when you look at that, so we would call that a full height, full width. So it's the full width of the vanity and it's the full height of the wall. That, that inside corner where the mirror butts up against the wall, that's always a difficult edge. So when, when our guys come out and we do all of our mirror installs, everything is custom measured. So we, we take our measurements, we're measuring what we call the rakes. So every wall in every home ever built is always be off a little bit. It might tilt this way or might tilt that way. And we cut our, our mirrors to fit into that tight opening. So if it's off by an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch, we cut that. So the mirror kind of travels and follows that, um, the path of the wall. Um, so then on top of that would be the, the mirror cutouts or plug cutouts. Again, we do that within our CNC machines. It gives us a nice tight edge. When, it's, when it is drilled and done by hand, that, that circle that gets cut out or the rectangle that cut, gets cut out can oftentimes be chipped. Um, and it's just the nature of the business. When you go and tighten that light fixture down, those are weak points. And at that time, if you tighten it too tight, that mirror will, will crack and spread. Now, again, just a technical thing, mirrors not tempered. Mirrors never tempered, it's left untempered because the backing that's applied to give you that mirror look uh, burns off in a furnace, so it can't be tempered. So it's it's really important to to plan ahead because it's not as simple as just taking out a tool at the job site and mm -hmm. cutting out for a light fixture or or a plug opening it's better to be done in the factory setting where we can get the measurements exact and get things done cleaner and tighter than than it would be by hand on site yeah absolutely and i guess going back one step further and this kind of overlaps a bit with our lighting episode that we did where the amount of planning that has to go into doing your electrical layout um, is significant, right? In this case, if that electrical mm -hmm. box is not fully centered within the vanity, for example, or above the sink, um, then when it comes time to do the install, that light fixture can't be adjusted from left to right, then we have a problem. Same would apply to the glass. If when you template, if you're templating off electrical rough and that's not centered, well, now we have a, a big problem on finishing. We're now having to not just open up the wall and move the light box over electrical box over with to take the whole mirror off and the mirror is probably going to be garbage because it's cut in the wrong place. So, right. you know, plan ahead, make sure that if you're doing this on your own, you, you know, talk to somebody to get some advice about what steps to consider. Um, you know, a good contractor like Simple Spaces, I think would probably flag on site, hey, this is not centered. You might want to deal with this before we cut the, cut the mirror, right? You know, I think that's an important point to note. Um, working with a, a good general contractor like yourself is, is critical. When you look at a bathroom like this picture that's shown, 
it, it looks simple, um, but it's not. <laughs> There's so many little points and pieces that a good contractor is going to make you aware of so you can keep your costs down so you can do it properly the first time. Um, and, that, and that's, of course, what all of us want. We, we, we don't like having to redo the work. We, we want to do it right in the first time. Um, maybe one other note on mirror installation of just, again, a step that we, we take. We use mirror mastic uh, to mount our mirrors. And it's just a, an industry product for mirrors specifically that allows us to get them up on the wall. We don't use very many clips, but we also don't want the mirror to be just clipped up itself because it, it can be um, loose and wobbly. So we use the mirror mastic and that gives us about six to eight months of, of time before we can, as we can pull that down and make changes to it before it fully hardens. So it, it's a safer process. It keeps it up on the, on the wall in a, in a better fashion. And then once, you know, about six to, to 12 months in, that'll be fully cured. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you touch the middle of a mirror and it kind of uh, wobbles a bit on that mirror, then you know it. Oh, we lost your audio there. I don't know. Can you hear me? I'm not hearing you. I'm not sure if anyone can hear me or if it's just on... Um on Andrew's side here. Hmm. Okay. Someone ping a comment. Can you hear me or can you hear Andrew? See where our technical difficulties coming in. Yeah, I'm not hearing you, Andrew. All right. Okay, we'll get Andrew back into the show here. Okay, you hear me? Well, I guess that's good. You got half the show going here. We'll, we'll invite them back into the show here. Bear with me. All right. Let's give us a sec, Andrew, to pull back in. The joy of the live show. You never know what you're going to get. Hey, sorry. Can you All hear right. me again? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, sorry. I lost you there. Yeah, no, no problem. Thanks. Uh, come on back. All right. Um, yeah, so mirrors, they're not as simple as you might think. Right, anything from edge finish, cutting holes in them, all that stuff. Uh, this image that's up right now, again, looks pretty simple. This was a super challenging install. You guys did this for us. Um, and just the way that these columns were installed, um, you know, that made for the need for a super precise cut on the glass. In the end, we did this with a little bit of an overlap on, of the columns over top of the glass but then you have to consider the reflection of the back edge of the column in front of the mirror as well. Um, my point being, it's actually fairly complicated. People don't often understand or, or under, get why the cost of a mirror can be so much on install because of the amount of work that goes into it up front, right? We always strive for as close to perfection as we can, which can be very challenging for someone working with a product like glass because in most cases, not everything's square, especially in a renovation, right? Like you talked about with putting in a mirror, you would template that. If you order it square, you go to install it, good luck. There's no way that most inside corners are nice and square. Yeah. Um, you know, filling it with caulking is not, in my opinion, um, always acceptable. It has to be a very, very small um, gap if that's going to fly, in, in, from my perspective, at least. Mm -hmm. but, Mm. Our, our comfortable tolerance is where we want to be is, is no more than an eighth of an inch off that wall. And, and to, to put something that tight to a wall, if you're not cutting to the, the slope of the wall, then like you said, you'll, you'll see that. If that's a straight edge, it will stick out like a, like a sore thumb. So it, it is important to find uh, the right people, ask the right questions, and uh, you'll, you'll get that high-end show home quality look if, if you do that. And it doesn't always have to be an excessive price um, to make that happen. But mm -hmm. uh, again, do it right the first time, pay the right amount up front, and, and you'll save a lot of headaches redoing the job over again. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about the planning, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so th in this image here, so this, it's hard to tell in the picture, but that mirror is actually flush, flush with the face of the, uh, the, the um, granite there's like a backsplash there. So what yeah. we've done there is actually we've installed some a granite um, backsplash and also kind of a header piece. And then we built out the wall. So when the mirror was installed, it was all flush with the face, right? And that's something right. again that takes a certain amount of planning between us and the countertop installers and making sure that we've accounted for um, the correct thickness of glass and all that stuff. So there's lots of considerations to, to make when you're planning um, your mirrors. And it's something that 
um, whether it's a custom fit or you're just picking the mirror for the space, there's a lot that's going to go into it because it has a big impact upon the look, right? Like this image, mm -hmm. this could be something that's um, very much, you know, the mirrors become kind of a focal point in the room and a bit of an accent piece. Um, in this case, we've done the back of a, a bar and the shelving in glass. Again, it kind of creates a nice effect. We, we did some backlighting there and, it, uh, you know, it's a nice little detail, um, you know, especially in smaller spaces, it can go a long way. Yeah, mirror, mirror obviously can help a room feel significantly larger. Um, and if, if done right, they're, they're beautiful pieces of art. You know, the picture you've got up is, is gorgeous. Uh, when backlighting um, or surface mounting a, a mirror, it's important to consider again, how big is the mirror? How much backing needs to be there? And if you're gonna do backlighting, what kind of plug are you using? Is it a recessed plug? Is it a switched plug so you can flip the switch on and off? If not, there are products out there where there's motion sensors that can be put underneath a mirror to help turn that light back on and off. Again, it just comes down to the planning and, and oftentimes uh, working with your designer to come up with a vision that, um, that you want to create. Most things are possible. Um, size does get into a bit of an impact on can you get it into the house? Can it turn the corners? Is it too big to get up the stairwells? Um, and is it uh, safe to have up in that, that, that position? And that's something that we can work with with you on if, uh, if customers have unique requests. Absolutely. And that's kind of the joy of custom, right? You can do something that really meets your needs and, and makes a space, um, you know, remarkable, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk about our giveaway item here for a sec. Before we keep going, we'll transfer, we'll start talking about some uh, shower door options here in a second. Sure. So if you're just tuned in now, so Simple Spaces has offered up a custom beveled mirror and installation is included up to 30 square feet. To qualify for the draw, enter the answer into the comments. And the question is, is uh, to what temperature does glass need to, uh, does it need to reach before uh, it becomes tempered? So look back in the, the comments. I can see there's some right answers in there now. So um, yeah, and then you have a few different options on your beveled edge size, all that stuff. So it will be a custom mirror. So you can certainly be involved in um, designing how it looks when they come and install it. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, do you have any comment on mirrors before we move on to shower doors? No, I think we've we've covered a lot. You know, we, we could talk for hours on it. I actually, sorry, maybe one other thing to add is mirror also comes in different colors. Um, the, the the product we, we stock and carry would be antique mirror. So it kind of has that mercury glass look to it. Um, we carry a gray glass and also a bronze, uh, sorry, a bronze mirror and a gray mirror. So there's a few different types of colors and finishes that are out there as well. It's not just your traditional reflective surface. So mm -hmm. lot, lots to think about, lots to work with. Yeah, absolutely. There's always options and it's a matter mm -hmm. of making sure you know what they are and then picking one that's going to work best for you. you know, I should have flipped this slide over. Uh, so this is a bathroom we did a couple of years ago for a client at a steam shower in the side uh, water closet. And uh, of course my head's in the way here. I mean, they have the pictures of this bathroom up here. This one you can see it a bit better. So to the left, you have the water closet. So if you know what that is, that's a little room with a toilet in it because we're going to the bathroom. And then on the right-hand side, we have a steam shower. So steam showers, we'll talk about that a bit later. There's many new, different considerations to make when planning a steam shower. But in this case, for us, um, it was a curbless shower. So we have uh, certain things to consider on the construction side to make that a reality for a client. But then as far as this went, we knew that the client wanted some privacy within the water closet, um, but didn't want the look of an actual framed wall with a standard door and made for kind of a small feeling space that was kind of dark. So we came up with this idea and what we did is we used um, an, an acid etched glass for some privacy within the water closet and then clear glass for the shower. So, I mean, there's different ways you can combine it. Um, you know, to get the effect that you want. There's lots of different options for obscuring glass. And I guess um, we should talk about that a little bit, Andrew, to see what, um, what's available there. What, what are your go-to obscuring treatments? Honestly, it, it's, it's very fashion driven. You know, home building, interior design is, is fashion focused. So, so trends shift and change. Currently, the, the most popular trend is, is the acid etch. Um, you can get uh, pinheads and Niagara type glasses that almost look like a, a water or a rain pattern. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's probably 20 or 30 different types of pattern glasses that are out there. 
and some of them go through levels of popularity and 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 less popular so right now that that frosted acid etch look is extremely popular it is a bit of a premium product because the process to make that glass is after it's gone through and been manufactured through the 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 float glass plant that's the these large large facilities that make the raw glass um, it then goes to an actual acid bath where it's it, it gets etched through an acid. So uh, a lower cost alternative, if somebody's looking for like a privacy band or screen, is is a um, a vinyl. And we do a lot of vinyl applications, and that's that's got some benefits because you can also change that out in the future. It is something that you know if you tire of it, it can be stripped off of the glass and and done in a different way. Um, but yeah, currently I'd say acid etch is, is up there as one of the most popular ways to provide a little bit of privacy. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, you know, I guess there's some things to consider there, as we discussed the other day, um, was with an acid etch, there is some transfer of oil on the one side where it's been etched. You have to be aware of the fact you could leave some fingerprints behind that take a bit of time to get out because it can absorb somewhat into the finish of the glass. That, that is true. We, we, we do have a bit of a newer product um, on the marketplace that resists that uh, fingerprinting, but it's, it's never something you can completely get rid of um, from an acid etch. So it is definitely something to consider. Mm -hmm. Definitely. As far as where you put it, which side out type of thing, um, you know, and who's using it. If it's, if it's your kid's bathroom, odds are you don't want the acid etch, at least yeah. on that one side out, you know, uh, getting that all dirty. So definitely. Um, Let's see here. I was going to whack them all through a few different bathroom photos here. So um, maybe I'll look for this framed here. So we talked about framed versus frameless glass. And I think uh, the big push in recent years has been to get away from the frame systems and go more frameless. And the advantage there is that it, you know, you don't feel, you don't notice the glass as much, right? Yes. You know, I, I think for honestly, the last 50, 60, 70 years of, of bathroom construction, that framed shower is in 70% of the houses. If you go into any house in Alberta right now, you'll probably find at least one shower in that home is, is that framed shower system. So going up to a, a frameless or a semi frameless is, is definitely a bit of a premium um, product and a step up. Uh, you, as you can see, even with this picture, you, there's not a lot of mercy. So you, you've got to have your measurements exact. You got to have your cuts lined up perfectly. Otherwise, um, you're going to see it and it sticks out. So the point of the frame shower is that you can hide um, some of those imperfections in the in the cut or in the wall. And again, with with us, whether it's a frame shower or a, or a frameless like what we're showing here, all of our showers are custom measured to fit that opening as tight as possible. Maximize the amount of glass, decrease the amount of metal that uh, is getting in the, the view line. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, it's one of those things when I got a couple of pictures here, I'll pull up that are taken looking through a frameless shower and kind of the difference that you see there, because you don't have anything impeding your line of sight. So it also gives you that feel of being in a much uh, more open space mm -hmm. here. I'm just rifling through the pics here, but um, hmm. okay. Well, for some reason, there we go. Of course, it's behind my head again, but um, so there's this is taken from inside a steam, a steam shower and you can see there you're looking right through a corner joint and you can see steal to the slipper tub nicely. And it's a nice, luxurious feel, um, you know, like you said, far more precision has to go into the manufacturing of this and the templates critical. Um, but again, know your options and pick what you know best suits your needs. Yeah, and I, I think it's important to note that oftentimes clients will spend a lot of money on their tile and, and the skill set for those tile installation jobs. You, you want to see that, that beautiful work. It's, it's handcrafted, it's hand quality, and, and we think it's important to um, let our product sort of be there but get out of the way, right? It, it's, it's beautiful, it's there, it's crisp, it's clean, but we've done our job right if, if you don't really notice us very well. Yeah, absolutely, and that's... Uh... Yeah, that's that's basically you nailed it. If your shower door jumps out at you because all you see is frame, right? That's to me, that's, you know, I mean, I guess it is what it is. Your rental property, you don't really care as long as it's watertight. That's one thing, right? But that's not what mm -hmm. we do here. Um, we want to make stuff. We want to make dream homes. It doesn't have to be right. expensive, but let's do it right. Let's make sure that you're getting something that you feel you're getting good value for the dollar you spend. And to me, value is something that you really appreciate it. It's beautiful. It's high quality and long lasting, and it's remarkable. 
you can be mm -hmm. very proud of what you've done with your space. And I think mirrors and glass is one way to really put that finishing touch on, on your space, right? I Definitely. Mean, um, this is a simple little bathroom we did in conjunction with some others in a, in a larger renovation and it's the guest bathroom and, you know, lots of different options for how you configure these things. But again, this client option opted for frameless and, you know, um, it's a nice clean look. But that being said, when we get into frameless, you have hinge doors like you have in this instance. And then you also have the option for a sliding door system. And I've got a couple of pictures here I'll pull up that kind of show a bit the difference in how they look. And um, so here's a, a sliding door system. So it's on kind of a barn door track. Here's an example, kind of zoomed in on the track itself. So let's talk a bit about the you know, the barn door track, I guess, or the track system itself. What are the options out there? Do you have anything that one should consider um, when, when going this route? You know what, there, there are so many options out there in the marketplace for um, barn doors and track systems. Um, the, the main thing to be, again, concerned about or just looking out for is, is the weight capacity of that track. Um, they oftentimes have a max weight and, and going up to a 10 mil thick shower door system on a, a frame that's not built for it is is problematic for obvious reasons. So uh, just make sure you read the specifications, look at what's there. And uh, again, just keep a close watch on, on the quality, quality of the finish, because the, the water and the soap and the, the cleaning chemicals, you know, you need something that's gonna last you a long time. You don't wanna spend that kind of money and have to replace it in a few months or a few years. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something, you know, the, the quality of the products, again, comes into play, right? We, we've seen them before where somebody had got inexpensive hardware used in conjunction with the glass and only to see this hardware start to the finish, start to flake off or deteriorate and start to rust. And then, I mean, that's a real shame, especially if you've got a tempered glass product, you've had some holes um, cut into them before the tempering process. And if the replacement hinge or handle you need no longer fits that hole pattern, you've got a big problem now. Yeah, you've got to you got to start from scratch. You can't uh, you can't really untemper that glass. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, I think it's part of. I guess actually, let's talk a bit about how you put a hole in tempered glass. Let's talk a bit about that because people don't often understand again the process and how critical it is that you get it right the first time. Sure. So again, just stepping back. So glass is manufactured in a float glass plant where they take all the raw materials and products and they they melt it, turn it into a molten product, and then it, it floats on a, on a, usually on a bed of zinc or tin, most often tin, molten bed of tin. And so that layer of glass will be determining whether it's five mil thick or 10 mil or you know, up, all the way up to you know, um, 20, 30 mils thick of glass, depending on the application. Then once that comes along, then, then a company like myself would say, okay, I'm ordering certain size sheets of this raw glass. So they, they cut it the sizes we take. And our sheet sizes are about 96 inches by 130 inches. That's the size of a sheet we take. Um, that gives us the best way to optimize the glass to reduce the amount of wastage and, and, and just be more efficient in what we do. Once that gets cut, then it, it, it goes to um, back over to us where we'll edge it and we'll drill our holes. So everything has to be drilled out prior to the tempering furnace uh, process. Um, what we currently use is we use two large CNC machines, very similar to what you would see on, on TV for cutting out uh, steel or granite countertops or things like that. And so it uses a, um, a water cooling jet with a high speed uh, series of drill bits that's gonna edge it or drill it out and give it that nice finish. And it's a multi-stage process. So if we're drilling out a, a hole for a handle, we'll first come in and drill it then the machine backs off, grabs another bit, and it drops inside that same hole and will polish that hole. And so it's, like I said, multi-stage. That same machine may cut out a notch for where a hinge is going. And the hinge cutouts that we cut out, we call them Mickey Mouse ears because they've got a very simple um, sort of square pattern with Mickey Mouse ears on the top. And that Mickey Mouse ear is another um, mechanical type fastening so that if the hinge does slip, then, then there's a, a piece of glass that's sort of blocking that from dropping off. So it, it's, you know, just a few steps that we take. But once that's done, then it goes over and gets tempered and cooked. So the glass will look like it's ready to go, beautiful, ready to be installed. It's just not been tempered. Once that's tempered, as soon as we go in and let's say you, 
hit it with a hammer or you, you try and smash it, it, that's it, it's done. If I were to re-drill that hole, it will shatter. It, it, it can't be recut at that time. So it's a multi-stage process. Um, because we do it here locally in, in Alberta, um, it takes us probably about an hour and a half to two hours per piece of glass to go through the, the whole process. Uh, to be ready to be installed in in a client's house mm -hmm. and i guess um yeah here's a good image i guess of this is for a railing system which we'll get into next and again here you're going to have a, a, a number of holes needed to be drilled in the glass to facilitate this this hardware type um the same would apply for something like this in a shower you have a, a handle you need to have a couple of holes so you need to know exactly what handle you're going to get in advance or the locations for all your railings all these things and they, they have to get drilled before it gets tempered, right? So yeah. again, there, there's a lot of very, um, you know, uh, detailed planning that has to go into this and there's very little room for error. Yeah, ra railing is a, um, a lot more complex. Like you said, it's, it, there's, there's usually at most about an eighth of an inch of, of play within where those holes are located. Even then that can be sometimes too far off and then that piece of glass is now garbage. Um, so that, that planning is critical. With, with railing, we prefer templating. So we would come out with a piece of cardboard or chloroplast, and we would actually do a, a, a mock-up of that. That then comes back to the shop, and then our, our senior glass cutter would, would be the person to take that handheld time to properly cut, lay out all the holes, um, get them set, and then over to the CNC machine to be properly drilled out. But um, a lot of the product is also still um, handheld and hand um, manual cut and, and, and done done by an uh, individual person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's la labor intensive for sure. So I guess let's talk about uh, railings for a bit here. So, you know, typically you'll have, there's a bunch of different options. We're going to obviously focus on the glass based options now. So you have like a wood glass combo railing. Um, you'll have a wood metal railing. Um, you'll have kind of a full glass system. This is more of, I guess, a dividing wall than anything, but um let's see you had a nice one too earlier again similar idea but let's talk about, a bit about the, i'll look through some of the photos here maybe we can talk a bit about the railings and uh, considerations and whatnot yeah so usually the starting point if you're looking sort of a stage one of a of a um, glass railing system would be what we call a lift and drop so there's going to be a wood or a metal system where it may have a top header or a bottom shoe and then the glass is literally slotted up into the top part and then drop down into the bottom shoe that's traditionally about you know it's traditionally done in a five or six mil thick glass um, it's easier to do it's quicker to do and again you have to be less precise on your cuts and so that's a bit more of a cost effective way to produce it it's also just a different look if you like that framed out look like the previous picture we had up there with uh, like that one there um, it creates a beautiful look and still gives you a nice uh, feel to it, but it allows you to keep the cost a bit more, um, a little bit more cost effective. Absolutely. Then this, uh, this project here, so very similar look, but the client wanted to have some of the, the hardware and, you know, a little bit more of an industrial kind of look to it. So same thing, this would have been done with a six mil glass, but it was with a clamp based system. Um, Again, different clamps have different functions. Some are just going to be literally a, 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 a clamp where it holds it in place, and others are going to be where we have to notch out or drill out the glass, and then that clamp is slotted through that hole drilled in the glass. Um, again, different look. Hardware adds a little bit more cost, um, but it is also a bit more of a secure way of doing things. If you've got any concerns with um, kids running into things and doing stuff like that, that clamp based system is going to be a bit more secure than just a lift and drop. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, this is, I guess I'll we'll actually, we'll get back to this picture. That's another, another conversation. And it's sure. Cool. Um, so the other style with, with railing would be again, these, um, you know, not a lot of handrails sort of very, very free and clear, you know, product that would be re referenced as a topless system. Um, there's a great example where it's just a post, there's also a product that we've got out there um, called a taper lock and it takes a four inch deep shoe and a 12 mil glass panel gets dropped in that, that railing. So there's no posts, there's no handrail. It's just clear and clean, um, nothing to get in the way of your view line. And that can be done in, in, in an interior application or an exterior application as well. 
you know, those, those are very nice too. And I guess there's always a time and place for the glass reeling. It's again, you have young kids, you don't like cleaning glass. Maybe the glass reeling is not the way to go. But as far as, you know, um, I, I'm a huge fan of uninterrupted line of sight. I love it. And so that's, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of frameless in general. But again, make sure that you are prepared to deal with the maintenance side of it, which is generally just the cleaning, right? Yeah. Um, because that's something definitely that can become, I've had some clients have us come in and swap out rail systems at a later date, especially on like balcony railing systems because they were tired of looking through dirty glass. They prefer yes. to have a spindle system where it was just, okay, there's spindles in my line of sight, but nothing's dirty, right? So again, think it through. It's all about the application and what works for you and for you and your home and, and what you're prepared to do as far as the maintenance side of things goes. Yeah, it's definitely something to consider. There, there are other products out there for application for an exterior railing. Um, there's a, a product out there called Enduro Shield, which can be applied by a, a customer after the fact. It, it's not necessarily as effective, um, but can also be done in a factory application setting, and that will give you a, um, a five to ten year warranty on the, the cleanliness of the glass. Easier to clean, easier to keep up. You just hose it down and it's good to go. Yeah. Um, within the showers, there's a product, we'll, we'll touch on this soon here, but there's a product called Claire Vista, and that's a factory applied coating. It's got a lifetime coating on it, but it's only good for the one side of the glass, the wet side or the shower side. So it doesn't really work great with the uh, exterior railing application. Yeah, and it, you know, actually that, on that topic, I remember when we did this shower, and this does have a header system in here, but, and this wasn't through you guys at the time, this installer did a great job for us, but Mm -hmm. I remember him offering us this glass treatment and it was to help keep the glass clean on the inside. And it was, it was not inexpensive to apply it. I remember the homeowner thinking, is it, is it worth it? And, you know, we tend to try and recommend, um, you know, based on what the client's interested in. And, and so they opted out and I never did really like in the lately when we've been getting custom shower glass, that product's not really come back up again as something that's, um, is offered to us. So I guess, where is it right now on your side of things? Are you recommending that product goes on for the glass maintenance? We, or? Yeah, we, we always recommend it. Um, it. It's Again, it's one of those hard products to sell. It's invisible. So if, if done right, um, again, you you can't see that it's there. In, in in the Alberta, you know, climate and the water and the, and the hard water that we generally deal with, it, it makes a substantial difference. It's not that you don't have to clean your shower. It just means that the cleaning of the shower is a lot easier. If you're just to squeegee that off every, after every use, you'll, you'll get a lot longer life out of your product. Glass um, over time can be etched. So with heavy duty cleaners or hard water buildup, it can etch your glass in time. And you know it's a worthwhile investment. If you look at the, the picture that you got up here, um, that is not a low investment. You know, that, that's, that's a lot of time and energy and money that goes into that. And the, the added value of adding that Claire Vista coating is, is definitely worthwhile if you're putting that level of, you know, dollars and cents towards your, your home and your project. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I guess, you know, I mean, as far as the investment that we're talking about here, like, you know, custom glass is not cheap right? There certainly are different grades you can get into, whether it be the glass thickness, you know, I mean, generally on our end, we try to stick at a minimum of a 10 mil for our shower glass. Um, but there's some limitations that come with the 10 and 12 mil glass where they gets kind of heavy. So then to factor in then the quality of your hinges, what kind of load can they take? How many hinges do you want? We have some clients who want as little hardware as possible. So they're looking to have a door with two hinges. But if it's a nine foot tall piece of steam shower glass, and they want an oversized door, well, that door panel itself can weigh a significant amount, and two hinges can't take it. Yeah, and, and you know what? The, the math's um, pretty easy for people to, to, to look at, but a 10 mil glass is roughly 5.5 5 pounds per square foot. So it, it adds up quite quickly. Um, and again, pretty rare that you can get away with a two hinge system on an, on an oversized door panel. So mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's, there's lots to consider. Um, 12 mil glass has, again, a lot of, um, uh, it, it, it has a nice touch, a nice feel to it. It has that quality feel. It's like the difference of shutting a, a door on a Lexus and a door on a Toyota Corolla, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a different feel to it. Um, but you do have to think about the engineering and the safety 
of that system to make sure it's done right. And again, working with the right organization is going to make sure that that's done properly. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I guess thickness as well. Like we, I've used shower door systems where you've got a five mil glass on there and that shower door vibrates. As soon as you hit it, the whole thing's shaky. Um, that's the stuff that I, I don't want to deal with that. I, I mean, I get it. The time and place to save your money. And generally I say avoid the entry level price point on things because quite often um, there's a pretty big downside to it. But again, you know, talk to your contractor or your, your suppliers about what's available and what the pros and cons are of each thing. Clearly, as you go up higher and higher in quality, the downside is it's expensive. But the plus side is it's probably going to last you forever and you'll be very happy with it. Yeah, and, and, and those shower systems going into the, the nicer quality systems, they may range between, let's say, depending on the size of the shower, but you're going to be around $1,000 to, you know, four or $5,000. If you're looking at the, the bathroom we're seeing here, that's, that's a lot of glass and, and quite large. And so that, that cost might be up in that $3,500 to $5,000 range. But when you look at the cost of redoing that shower system, if you did a five mil shower um, in five, six years, and, and, and I, having my, my past life and working in the home building side of things, um, we would see homes on average being re-renovated, changed out every five to seven years. And where do you start? Bathroom and kitchen. That's the first place that gets and can look and feel dated. I think when you look at the picture you've got up here, that, that bathroom is timeless. You mm -hmm. can go into that bathroom in 10 years, 15 years, and it's going to have that same beautiful look and feel. And, and then that's, that to me is, is a critical aspect of good design. If, if it's got the ability to stand the test of time, um, then that five or $6,000 was a worthwhile investment as opposed to redoing that same shower two, three times over the lifespan of that house. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, it's, it's deeper than, go, than just a good design, right? This design is great, but the quality of materials is a key component there. If you have a great design and you use garbage to build it, it'll look good for a short time, right? So, um, you know, I, I just, that's kind of my prerogative is always to try and get out there and make sure people are opting for the best practice, not for the, the minimum code requirement or the, the least the lowest acceptable option right stay away from yeah. that stuff you're just gonna you're looking for trouble stay away from it you know pay a little bit extra get something that's high quality and that will stand the test of time um let's talk about this for a second because this is um i guess between this and whether you have a gym door system whether you have um, an office divider, whatever it is, there's different ways you can use glass that will truly help to make something uh, a display and functional at the same time. So um, tell us a bit about this, this wine storage, where is it? Um, and what you had to consider then when you get into glass, but there's probably some overlaps between this and a steam shower on some level too, as far as how the seal, you know, what your tolerance is for, for sealing is all that kind of stuff. Yeah, very, very, very similar to a steam shower. So in, in this client's application, this was done in the, the basement of their home. Um, again, one thing to consider with most concrete floors is they're not flat. And so you've got to consider that application and, and where the glass needs to get smaller and taller while still maintaining a consistent look. Um, so your, your starting point is always a critical aspect to it you know, wine, wine rooms, you know, it's generally not a product you want to hide or stick in a closet. So you want it to stand out, you want it to look beautiful. But at the same time, you usually have and can have some strict uh, climate control needs and requirements. Um, so again, depending on this, on, on your specific application, the product you're using, glass can have multiple different types of seals. Those seals can be as tight as you want them to be. You can't ever put the glass tight glass to glass if it's a door application because obviously if it slips or slides and that it starts to hit it it's going to chip the glass mm -hmm. so again we generally try to leave anywhere between an eighth to a maximum of a quarter inch gap and then we will use fins and sweeps and those fins and sweeps can be trimmed down to tighten things up um, it's never perfectly airtight and it's never going to be perfectly watertight in the application like you're looking at if it has to be completely airtight, then you're going to use a true framed in system. Um, mm -hmm. But most people applications or most people's applications don't require that true 
perfectly air or watertight application. So, um, yeah, we, we, can, we can get that thing pretty darn tight so that you can maintain that proper level of uh, temperature and humidity, uh, depending what you're storing in that space. And again, just work with your contractor to find the right type of humidity control system, uh, temperature systems. There's lots of product on the market to um, not just make it look good, but actually have it functional for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll quickly talk about steam showers and then we'll do our last call on our giveaway item. So this is a steam shower that we did together uh, a little while ago. Um, there was going to be some film coming out for some privacy film on that, that water closet beside it has a glass door as well. So, um, mm -hmm. but what I want to talk about a bit was steam showers because there's some special considerations to, to make there because with the steam shower, after you've used your steam shower, you need to have good ventilation in the bathroom to be able to pull that humidity and moisture out of the bathroom and get it out of your home because so much can be is generated in the, by the steam shower. So there's really two things to consider with your shower. When this person here, when they finish using their steam shower, they opted out of a transom. So it's a little window above your door. So you need to be able to get the steam out of the shower and the, 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 the fans are not put in the showers, they're out in the bathroom area. So in this case, you need to leave the bathroom, the shower door open while the fan runs. And that can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes where you have to leave, remember to leave your shower door open. Otherwise you can have a transom window above your door or elsewhere in the shower, which is a little window you can leave open to help it ventilate. Um, there's also some, you know, tolerances on the seal itself as far as you want to make sure you hold the steam into the shower when you're using it. If you haven't turned on your fan, you want to make sure that, um, you know, it stays in there until you, you, you crack it and, and get that thing venting. So it's steam shower wise. Are there any things, Andrew, that you want to talk about there? Um, I, I do think it's important to note that, um, you know, again, if, if, if you have an opportunity to come and see our showrooms in Calgary and Edmonton, the operable transom that you're talking about it's on a little pivot system so it will it will twist and you can twist it whichever way you want to have that open it's really important again it, moisture buildup inside a space is is never a good thing especially again with our climate where where we get these massive um, cold spells and then then we get the chinooks and the the stuff we have to deal with mm -hmm. so to have that operable transom we would advise it as much as possible um, again within a steam shower we do everything we can with the fins and sweeps to make sure that it, it's as tight as possible. There's always going to be here and there, but if you don't put it t tight enough, that steam shower won't get to that heat and that sort of, um, you know, that, that temperature that you want to get out of a steam shower. So it's important to do that, but also know when we put those fins and sweeps very tight as that, that door is opening and closing, those fins and sweeps can come off. Um, they, they have a heavy duty double-sided tape, which holds them on. And so don't be surprised if in a year or three years, they start to come off with us. Just give us a call. We always supply a client a replacement fin at no cost. It's easy for us to do. And if the client's happy to install it themselves, it's fairly straightforward and we provide that. But if you're going for that full steam shower, we want it to be as tight as possible. And, and that's going to give you a, a, a nice experience with that steam unit. Absolutely. Yeah, but certainly. And it's a good thing to point out there is that you want that seal to be nice and tight, which can make the door a little bit harder to operate because that's that seal has to connect to the tile surface and glass surface around it. So, um, mm. you know, just keep that in mind. All right, let's do our last call on our giveaway item. So Simple Spaces has offered this custom beveled mirror, including installation up to 30 square foot size. And to qualify for the draw, you need to let me know what temperature glass has to reach for it to become tempered. There's uh, the correct answer is already noted in the comments throughout the feed here. So take a look at that. Put your comment in in about uh, well, a couple minutes. I'm leaving it a bit late today here, but we'll get, uh, we'll announce the winner today. And then we'll, we'll talk about how that person goes about, um, I guess, how, how do we do this here, Andrew? Are they gonna book a time with you guys to come out for a template right off the get-go? Or do you talk about getting some sketches back and forth first? Yeah, I, I think what we would love to do is have them come into our showroom and just make sure it's exactly what they're looking for and what they want and uh, then we'll book a time to come out and do our site measure and within about five to seven business days we'll have that thing installed and, and up in place so um, just have them reach out to to either our Calgary Edmonton office depending where the person is located and we will set up a time with one of our designers all right sounds great all right so enter your your answer in the comments and then uh, we'll we'll do the draw here in just a couple more minutes
All right. Well, um, we're getting towards the end of the show here. If there are any questions you might have, anybody out there, feel free to um, hit us in the comment section. We'll be sure to answer them for you. Um, like I've been saying repeatedly throughout the, the show here, and like I always do, um, you know, educate yourself about the process. If you're doing this renovation on your own, say you're taking on your own bathroom reno, but you know you need a custom shower door, you know, call Simple Spaces, talk to them about it. Whoever you talk to, there's lots of good contractors out there, lots of good vendors, but you need to make sure that you're being educated about what your options are so you can make the choice that works best for you. Um, you know, I would say that don't ignore the cost because the cost is an important part of making that choice. But, you know, you need to know what your options are. Nothing's worse than finding out later you had an option and now it's too late. Maybe somebody thought, oh, there wasn't within their budget. I always tell my clients their options, even though I know often it's out of out of the stated budget. But once they find out, holy smokes, we can have that too then maybe they make a compromise elsewhere to, to integrate that option into this choice now. So it's one of those things, do your research, look at more than the bottom line, you know, talk to a good contractor. Uh, you need some, you need glass and mirrors, call simple spaces. These guys do a great, great job for us. Um, you know, their, their work speaks for itself. Go to their showrooms that you think you'll be impressed. And if you have a bigger project you're considering and you need somebody to quarterback multiple trades and all the moving parts and help steer you clear of all the landmines that are out there, um, then reach out to us. I'm happy to consult with you and give you advice. Even if you're going to GC your own job, um, I'm happy to talk to you a bit about it because I don't want to see anybody in this disaster restoration mode after your job's been done. I, I've seen it too yeah. many times. It's, it's uh, kind of heartbreaking. Anyhow. Andrew, well, I, I, is, yes, okay. I appreciate that, Paul. I, I agree. It's, you know, just do your homework and don't be afraid to ask for multiple quotes. Don't be afraid to... Um, question the product, how it's made, where it's made. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, just some, some basic questions will help you have a happy experience and a, and a good, good, uh, good quality product when it's all said and done. Absolutely. It's all about the planning too, right? Education, yeah. planning, and, uh, and good solid advice from the experts. So uh, we got a winner, Original Ninja Martini. You are the Perfect. winner of the custom beveled mirror. Um, so congrats. Um, I know this person, they are in the Edmonton area, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll connect them with you guys and, and they can head out and take a gander and, uh, congratulations. Great. Thanks a lot for the, uh, the giveaway item. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for setting this up. We're always happy to share our knowledge and love to talk about the industry and the, the products that are out there. It's great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, um, yeah, thanks a lot for joining us. I don't see any last minute questions that have come in. So, um, I would say, you know, at the very least, if you have any questions at all, reach out to us and we'll direct you onwards into the people that we trust, whether it's a sub trade or a vendor. Um, obviously, Simple Spaces is on that list for us. Um, yeah, so this is the Art of Renovation Live, episode 20. Hey, look at that. We hit 20. Um, <laughs> it's been a busy summer, let me tell yeah. you. Yeah. Um, but uh, so we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're probably going to talk about um, appliance installation. And again, like anything, there are so many considerations to make options that are available. And each of those options has an impact upon anything from your cabinetry to your countertops, to your electrical requirements, to your plumbing requirements. So there's a lot to learn. Um, I'm happy to help try and teach you all a bit about it. There I am in my Southern accent coming out. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, one last scan here for questions. I don't see any. Um, Andrew, you got a joke of the day? We got a minute and twenty seconds. We might as well use it up. Joke of the day. Oh, you dad know what? Jokes I, are always good. I was gonna say like there's there's a bunch of bad dad jokes that I, you know I'm not I'm not a great joke guy off the top of my mind. And if I if I have some, they're probably not clean enough to be putting on this right now. So all right, I got one for you then. Dad okay. joke. What did the zero say to the eight? What? Nice belt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and we're just gonna watch our followers just drop off now. Yeah, it's it's, it's gone, gone now. Yeah, yeah, we just wrecked the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, I'm gonna throw up a couple more pretty pictures because, um, like I said before, the glass can make a huge difference. Whether it's the side of the mirror side of things reflecting light, or the you know the glass, which is keeping the water off the floor. Uh, whichever way you do it, plan it well, make good choices in your products. You're not too sure, talk to an expert, get some help with design, 
get a consultation in first before you just sign up for what you think is the next great thing. This is the Art of Innovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster. Andrew, thanks for joining. Thank we'll you. We'll see you guys all again in a couple of weeks. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye.